Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Emery Lumumba, Amelka Cabral, Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara. What do all of these leaders have in common? One correct answer will be that they are four of Africa's greatest leaders. Another valid answer will be that all four of these leaders had undying love for their people. Also, another commonality between all four leaders is that they were all betrayed by some of their own countrymen. This betrayal of Africa's great leaders is a tragic part of the African story and goes a long way to explain the mess Africa is in today as the most committed leaders met tragic ends at the hands of some of their own compatriots. Knowing this sad historical fact may lead one to conclude that good African leaders are always betrayed by some of their own people. But is the betrayal of good and selfless leaders unique to Africa? In other words, is it only in Africa that good leaders are betrayed? What has happened to good leaders elsewhere, especially in the so-called third world? Have these leaders faced a different reality or have they also ended up being betrayed by their own people? It is the answers to these questions that this video seeks to provide. Due to the existence of racism, many Africans tend to think in terms of race and inevitably blame every bad thing in Africa on Africans and our blackness. But in order to truly understand how the world works, it is important to look beyond Africa and at other parts of the world, especially areas we share a common history with, such as South America. Just like Africa, most of South America was also formerly colonized and had to fight for their independence. In a speech Osagefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah gave in 1961 calling on Africa to unite, he called on every African to steady the example of South America, where the 12 resource-rich countries making up the continent had failed to unite after gaining independence and as a result continued to remain dependent on foreign interests. It is this call by the Osagefo that I intend to take up with this video by looking at some good leaders in South American history and how they suffered a very similar fate as Africa's good leaders. As is very well known, Ghana's Osagefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and the Congo's Patrice Lumumba were two of Africa's most patriotic and selfless leaders. The two great men were leaders who had witnessed their country's natural resources being planted by foreigners as their own people starved and dared to change this unjust reality. It is in large part due to this reason that both Nkrumah and Lumumba were considered great threats who had to be eliminated at all costs. In South American history, there is also the story of Salvador Allende, the president of Chile from 1970 to 1973. Like Lumumba, Chilean President Allende was only able to remain in power for a very short period due to very strong internal and external opposition. Despite being entitled to a six-year presidential term, Allende was only able to serve for just about half of those years until his removal in a very violent US-backed coup. Salvador Allende died during this coup as the presidential palace was bombed by traitorous Chilean soldiers. The betrayal of Allende was spearheaded by General Augusto Pinochet, who had in fact been appointed to become head of the Chilean army by Allende himself. So President Allende was stabbed in the back by the man he had appointed to the top position in the Chilean army. This is in fact the same way Patrice Lumumba appointed Mobutu to a top position in the Congolese army, a decision that ultimately turned out to be a fatal mistake. Like Lumumba, Allende was sabotaged and attacked relentlessly by the US government from the very beginning until they ultimately succeeded in getting rid of him using internal traitors. In fact, both Salvador Allende and Patrice Lumumba had to overcome attempts to prevent them from taking power. In the case of Lumumba, the Belgian colonizers initially chose others to form a government in the Congo, despite Lumumba and his party winning the majority in the 1960 elections. And in the case of Allende, the US government went to extreme lengths together with traitors in the Chilean army to prevent Allende from being sworn in after he won the 1970 elections. This attempt was ultimately unsuccessful, but it led to the assassination of the head of the Chilean army at the time, General René Schneider. The general was killed because he refused to allow the army to intervene in politics. Like Patrice Lumumba and Kwame Nkrumah, the main reason Salvador Allende was undermined and attacked so relentlessly was because he sought to change the unjust and unequal status quo in his country. Allende, just like the two African leaders, had come to power, determined to ensure that the wealth of the country 
will benefit all the people instead of a few individuals and groups. To do this, Allende understood that Chile's natural resources had to be owned and controlled by the Chilean state for the benefit of the Chilean people. And this is exactly what he sought to do. Just like Patrice Lumumba had dared to do in the Congo and Nkrumah had also done to a large extent in Ghana. It is for this reason that all three leaders were hated and opposed by the greedy and selfish elements inside their country together with Western governments led by the United States. And just like Nkrumah and Lumumba, Salvador Allende was greatly loved by his people who voted for him in 1970 despite a well-financed effort to demonize and undermine him. Throughout all the attacks and sabotage, the people of Chile continued to remain loyal to Allende and this is exactly why his enemies had to resort to a violent coup. The case is exactly the same for Patrice Lumumba and Kwame Nkrumah who were also greatly loved and supported by their people in spite of all the demonization and sabotage. This is what forced the Congolese and Ghanaian sellouts to resort to violence in order to get rid of both leaders. In talking about the enduring love and loyalty that all three leaders enjoyed from their people, it must be highlighted that the West, led by the United States, did not care in the least about the fact that all three of them were democratically elected. Despite always claiming to care so much about democracy, the West sabotaged, undermined and worked relentlessly to eliminate Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Lumumba and Salvador Allende. In Latin America, there are other examples aside Allende of democratically elected leaders who were overthrown in coups that were strongly backed by the US. These leaders include Jacobo Abenz of Guatemala in 1954, Brazil's Jao Goulart in 1964, Venezuela's Hugo Chavez in 2002, and Bolivia's Evo Morales in 2019. All of these leaders suffered the same fate as Allende, Lumumba and Nkrumah precisely because they all sought to ensure that the national wealth benefited all the people and not just a few individuals and groups. For seeking to ensure economic and social justice and equality, all of these leaders were attacked relentlessly until they were gotten rid of. In every single case, there was always an alliance between internal elements who were benefiting unduly from the inequality and Western governments who wished to see their corporations continue to plunder natural resources. Again, in all of these instances, the fact that all of these leaders were democratically elected did not matter to the West or the internal opposition. A look at Africa's history with military leaders will show that Thomas Sankara has been one of the very few good military leaders Africa has had. The vast majority of African military leaders have been brutal dictators who oppressed their people for the benefit of foreign interests and their own personal interests. A look at South American history will also show the very same feature of a long list of brutal military dictators and very few good military leaders. One of such good military leaders in South American history was Juan Jose Torres of Bolivia. Torres was the president of Bolivia for only 10 months, from October 1970 till August 1971. This is the first commonality between Bolivia's Torres and Burkina Faso's Thomas Sankara, who was also in power for a very short period. General Torres was overthrown in a bloody military coup d'etat, which was led by Colonel Hugo Banza. Just like Thomas Sankara, General Torres was also eventually assassinated. Immediately after the coup, he fled Bolivia and settled in Argentina, but in June 1976, he was kidnapped and shot to death, with his body left under a bridge in Buenos Aires. Like Sankara, General Torres was known to be a man of the people and commanded great support and love from his people. When he was in power, General Torres sought to improve the lives of ordinary Bolivians and also worked to take control of Bolivia's natural resources, specifically the tin mines. For doing this, his government was subjected to constant internal and external subversion, just as was the case for Thomas Sankara in the 1980s. And just as the traitor Blaise Campari reversed all the progressive and nationalist policies of Thomas Sankara after the coup, the Bolivian traitor Hugo Banza did exactly the same by ending General Torres' nationalizations and opening up Bolivia to unrestricted foreign investments. In fact, this trend of traitors quickly reversing the progressive and nationalist policies of good leaders 
can be seen in all the other instances already mentioned. Whether it was in Ghana after the overthrow of Kwame Nkrumah or in Chile after the overthrow of Salvador Allende, we see the traitors always opening up their countries and handing it over to the West to be recolonized. In the plot to eliminate Thomas Ankara, it is well known that there was Western involvement, most principally that of France. And the same was the case in the plot to remove General Torres as the United States provided critical assistance to the Bolivian traitors. Now, I am sure every African watching this will know about Samora Machel, the first president of Mozambique, a truly good and selfless leader who worked tirelessly to uplift his people. It is well known that Samora Machel died in a fatal plane crash under mysterious circumstances. Many believe that the plane crash was caused by the enemies of the great African leader who wanted to get rid of him because they considered him to be a threat. In the Latin American country of Panama, there was a good military leader called Omar Torrios from 1968 to 1981. Just like Samora Machel, Torrios stood for his people and country and refused to be dominated by foreign powers. Omar Torrios took on the United States in a fight to assert Panamanian sovereignty over the Panama Canal, which was in the control of the US. He eventually succeeded in this fight as the US relinquished control over the Panama Canal to Panama. But in 1981, the aircraft Torrios was traveling in crashed, killing him together with six others. A cousin of Omar Torrios, Colonel Robert Diaz Herrera, has alleged that the plane crash occurred because of a bomb that was placed on board the flight. He accused the US and others as being part of the plot. So again, we see a striking commonality between the mysterious and unresolved deaths of two good leaders, one in Africa and the other in Latin America. As has been shown in this video, any leader who has attempted to stand for his people and fight against inequality and foreign domination has always been targeted and attacked relentlessly by an alliance of internal and external forces. This is most certainly not unique to Africa, as the stories of Chile's Allende, Bolivia's Juan Jose Torres, and many others show. In the capitalist imperialist world we live in, upright and selfless leaders are considered dangerous because they seek to ensure justice and equality for all. Those who benefit unduly from an unjust status quo will always seek to maintain their privileges and as such will fight any attempt to ensure fairness and justice. As you can see, the Chilean traitor Augusto Pinochet was not a black man, just as the Bolivian traitor Hugo Banza also wasn't. I make this point because many Africans have wrongly believed that the treachery of Campari, Mobutu and others has something to do with their skin color, but this is categorically false. Traitors can be found in every society and in every part of the world. It is critical that we look beyond Africa if we want to understand how the world really works. The global capitalist system does not only exploit Africa. And it is important that we look to other parts of the world, especially Latin America, for lessons on how to liberate ourselves in Africa. Please do support us by liking this video and sharing your thoughts in the comment section. And please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching.